JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Missing fishermen rescued by JDF. The Jamaica Defense Force JDF says the fishermen who went missing at sea have been rescued. Initial reports had indicated that 11 fishermen were missing, but subsequent reports confirmed that number to be nine, the JDF stated. The fishermen departed the Kobe here in St. Andrew for Moran Keys in three canotype vessels on Saturday, June 29, 2024, and were expected to return on Tuesday, the 2nd of July. When they failed to return and efforts to reach them proved futile, the JDF was contacted to begin search and rescue operations. The JDF says the fishermen were found trapped on Moran Keys after deteriorating sea conditions due to the passage of Hurricane Beryl made it difficult for them to sail. The Army says they were escorted to shore by service members from the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard where they were reunited with their families. The JDF is advising all seafarers that overdue vessels and vessels in distress can be reported to the Maritime Air and Operations Center at 876-926-8121 at extension 40426 or 876-836-1216. Community unity across Manchester following burial. Amid destruction and the displacement caused by Hurricane Beryl, this did not dampen the community spirit among residents in Manchester. The hurricane left a trail of downed trees, blocked roads, and a damage of property across communities. Most in-season crops have also been destroyed. A visit to areas such as Mandeville, Windsor Forest, Farm, Mount Oliphant, and Manning's Field saw residents and members of the security forces coming together to clear roads and assist those in need. Me I rode from early this morning to start to help my community with the clean-up so that care can drive on the main road and we can get some movements on the place, Devon Hall, a resident of Mount Oliphant said. Residents use their own equipment and the machines to contribute to the cleaning up of their areas. Men in Gent, Jamalco, through the use of its service vehicles, also contributed to the recovery efforts. Despite the turmoil, one resident from Manning's Field, who prepared for the worst, fell somewhat at ease in the aftermath of the destructive storm. Precautionary measures taken by locals mitigated potential harm and the damage to the property, using reinforcement to safeguard as much as they can. Well, I basically made sure that there were no loose obstacles around the house and kept everything locked up. Make sure everybody was inside early enough to avoid all the weather, said Richard Scaife. Scaife decided to do a little barbecue at his shop for the local community, demonstrating resilience and community spirit in the face of adversity. I'm trying to do the right thing here, just keeping everybody safe and doing the best we can to help. So right now, we just want to like get together after this time to eat some lunch. It's a part of the clean-up, so when people pass by, they can stop and get something to eat and drink if anything available, Scaife added. The gesture highlighted the community spirit among residents and a drive to collectively rebuild. Man killed, woman injured in St. Catherine home invasion. The Guanaboville police in St. Catherine have launched an investigation into the shooting death of a man and the injuring of a 34-year-old woman last night in Naysbury Grove. That is 31-year-old Kevin Smith. It is reported that at about 11 p.m. they were at the man's home when three men, two armed with guns, entered the dwelling. A struggle developed during which Smith and the woman were shot. When the police arrived, Smith was found unresponsive in blood inside the house. Both were taken to the Spanish Town Hospital, where Smith was pronounced dead and the woman admitted. Police seized M16 rifle and ammunition in St. Andrew. A high-powered weapon, along with several rounds of ammunition, was seized Friday afternoon during a targeted operation in Lower Happy Grove, St. Andrew. The police and M16 rifle with a magazine containing 13 cartridges was seized. Reports from the Red Hills Police are that at about 1.30 p.m., a team of officers carried out a targeted search operation at a dwelling and the gun and ammunition found. Detective Inspector Colin Berger, station commander at the Red Hills Police Station, said a suspect was taken into custody in relation to the seizure. We will continue to relentlessly pursue criminal elements and violence producers within our space, he vowed. Arrested for shooting of construction worker during dispute in St. Catherine. A 31 year old Tyler was arrested by the Lindsay Police in St. Catherine after allegedly shot a worker on a construction site last night. He has been arrested on suspicion of wounding with intent and the breaches of the Firearms Act. Reports are that at about 7 40 pm, both men were working along the Lindsay bypass when a verbal dispute developed between them. 
The suspect then left and reportedly returned with a handgun. He then fired shots, hitting the complainant in the right shoulder. Woman's lifeless body left to the elements as Burl raged. As those who could do so sought shelter inside, Keon Sterling's lifeless body was on the ground. She was fatally struck by a fallen tree about 2.30 p.m. on Wednesday, but with Hurricane Burl on the way, her body remained there overnight. Distraught neighbors and relatives finally removed her corpse on Thursday. On Friday, Sterling's cousin Cleveland Thompson was still struggling to understand why she had been outside in the first place. He is also a landlord. According to residents, Sterling went outside to figure out why her internet service stopped working. She died on a hillside a short distance away from the service line that leads along a dirt track to her house. You see, when I got here hill, I got asked her why she have to go up there to go check wire. See the wire yeah, that go round to her house. So cause, why you have to go round there so cause, why she never go up there so? A distressed Thompson asked rhetorically. Only God alone can tell and she, but may her soul rest in peace, he added. Residents said after the wind picked up shortly after 2 p.m., Sterling, who is a hotel employee, lost service and reportedly asked one of her sons to check what was happening with the internet. He reportedly refused to go outside in the storm. Around 2.30 p.m., Sterling went outside to investigate the problem when she was struck by an uprooted tree. She died on the spot. Sterling was one of a number of individuals who rented out in spots on several acres of land Thompson owns. He evacuated ahead of the storm and said he encouraged others to do the same. Some, including his cousin, did not listen. Me feel it when me one of my tenants did. Me couldn't believe it. I was wondering, I wish one of them. So me come here yesterday in the afternoon and saw what was going on. I couldn't believe that it was her, stated Thompson. When me come around here, me saw a whole heap of policeman, fireman, soldier man, power saw man, and all kind of man around here. When they remove the trash and the tree from around her, and my sister and she, me have to walk away, he said. His cousin's death has been compounded by the indignity of her body remaining on the spot overnight during the storm. It was removed Thursday morning between 9 and 10 after residents, tired of waiting, decided to take matters into their own hands. The fireman and policeman do a good job, but due to the condition of the weather, they couldn't pull through and take her away. Last night, she was around during the rain and a while ago, a problem for carry out to the main road, said Thompson. He said he and his friends cleared away fallen trees to create a passage along the dirt road and footpath that leads to and from the area. And all day, nobody don't come fear. We had to carry out on board, Thompson said incredulously. However, he made it clear that he was not blaming anyone because he understands the weather conditions that were at hand. It's the first time that Mr. Sumadi did, and if we never lick out, the body would have been there the same way. Everybody does come and take picture, and the girl lie down. Boy, Jamaica run away, me now lie. We have to change up, appealed Thompson. Sterling, who does housekeeping at a Negril Hotel, had rented a house spot from Thompson for the past two and a half years. She's a good girl. She's my family. She's a trying and ambitious girl, stated Thompson, who noted that she was someone who would get things done. She's serious. She's a girl who walk with an iron fork. She cut down trees. She's a brave girl and I respect her. She's my family for life. She's a real young and good girl, he added. NWA working to clear all roads before Monday. The National Works Agency, NWA, is working to have all roads rendered impossible due to the passage of Hurricane Beryl, cleared before Monday, July 8. Up to Friday, just under 200 roads were cleared of blockages to allow for at least single-lane traffic. Senior Director for Project Implementation of the NWA, Varden Downer, gave the update at a press conference on Friday at the Ministry of Science, Energy, Telecommunications and Transport in St. Andrew, where the country's critical agencies outlined their restoration measures. He noted that efforts are underway to clear remaining 10 roads in the parishes of St. Elizabeth, Hanover, St. Catherine, St. Thomas and rural St. Andrew. All our parish teams have been active since the hurricane passed and we have been working very hard. There are some challenges we're having with the communication system, especially in the southern part of the island, but we continue to push, he said. After we get through the clearing of the roads, then our objective will be to do the cost assessment and the assessment for restoration and rehabilitation, he said. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.